All right, so in the last video, um, I talked about uh, time dilation, and I derived the equation for time dilation. It looks something like this. Um, this is referred to as gamma, and if you think about it, just sort of as an aside, um, right, gamma is always going to be bigger than one. I probably should have talked about this a bit in the last video, but if you think about it, the speed of two objects relative to each other will always be less than the speed of light. So this factor here, um, this fraction, will always be less than 1, and 1 minus that will give you some number in the denominator here that's the square root of something less than 1, and 1 over that will always be something bigger than 1. Right? So what this tells you is that if you have the time measured by something, or an observer, um, at rest with respect to some two events, then someone who measures those those two events as moving through space will actually measure more time. Right? So this can be a, a sort of simple way to interpret this is that moving clocks will tick slower. Right? And this makes sense from the last video because if you think about the light clock, right, the person who was at, at rest with respect to the light clock would measure less time between the ticks, right, the light going from one mirror to the other, than someone who observes the light clock to be moving. The person who observes the light clock moving will measure more time between each tick of the light clock. Um, but what the point of this video is, is basically to use time dilation, which we derived from the last video, to derive length contraction. And we're going to do it again just using Einstein's postulates and some simple thought experiments. So let's look at this first situation. So here, what we've got are two observers moving relative to each other, and we have some kind of a, a rod, um, let's say just laying on the ground. Now in this first scenario, the rod is at rest with respect to the ground and this observer, and this observer is moving to the right. Now this observer is going to cross the rod and measure the time it takes to get from the front to the back of the rod. So they're going to measure some time. So let's give them a little timer. And this other observer is also going to measure the time. But if we think about it from this person's reference frame, right, that would be over here, they are actually at rest. And what's actually happening is the rod and this other observer are moving past them. Now we already know from the last video that in this situation, right, if we use time dilation, um, this clock is moving with respect to this observer. So this person, right, if they measure, if they both measure the time it takes the skateboard to get from A to B, right, this person will measure a different time than this person does. Right? This person will see this person's clock as ticking slowly. Therefore, this person will measure less total time between points A and B than this person measures that it takes for them to get from A to B. So I'm going to call the time that this person measures delta T naught, and the time this person measures delta T. And it also makes sense here that if they disagree on how long it takes to get from point A to point B, then they will also disagree on how far apart those two points are, and thus how long the ruler is. So here's what I mean. So this person measures it takes time delta t to get from a to b. So this person would write an equation that looks like, okay, the skateboard's going at speed v, it covers a distance l naught in a time delta t naught. That's what this person will say. Oh no, not delta t naught, just delta t. That's the time they measure. This other person though, right, they're not moving in their own reference frame. They see the ruler as moving towards them. They will say, oh, right, the time that it takes for this ruler to pass me is the time that I measure, right, which is delta t naught. And the ruler will have some length L, which is different than L naught, right? Because the times are different, but the speed that the skateboarder is moving, according to this person, 
should be the same that the speed the ruler is moving according to the skateboarder, right? Or the rod, whatever we want to call it. So what this means is they both measure different times that it takes the skateboarder to pass the rod, which means they also both have to measure that the lengths of the rod are different because these speeds are the same. Here, this is the speed of, right? This is the speed of the skateboarder passing the rod. This is the speed of the rod passing the skateboarder, but they should be the same, right? Same magnitude. So what this means is we can sort of um, combine these equations. But we already have this relationship between delta t and delta t naught, right? We know that delta t, and maybe I'll just go ahead and rearrange a little bit. I should make more room. I have not been conserving space well. Let me come back over here. L naught over delta t is equal to L over delta t naught, which means that L naught delta t naught is equal to L delta t. And we know that L, or we know that delta t is equal to this, 1 over 1 minus v squared over c squared delta t naught. Delta t naughts actually cancel. So if we solve for L as a function of L naught, we actually get L equals 1 minus v squared over c squared square rooted times L naught. Here's our equation for length contraction. All right, so this is pretty cool. All right, this basically tells me if some object has a length L naught when it's at rest, right, so observed at rest, then when it's observed moving at a speed v, we can find what its length is going to be according to an observer that sees it as moving. And again, here, right, v squared over c squared, this is going to be something less than 1. So um, 1 minus that gets us something less than 1. Right, so this factor will always be less than 1, which tells us that if an object is observed to be moving, then it will be observed to be shorter than its length at rest. Right, that's why this is called length contraction. And if we wanted to write it in terms of gamma, right, this is basically 1 over gamma. Right? This whole factor here was gamma. So we could write it like this, 1 over gamma times L naught, sort of the shorthand form. So what this tells us is that moving objects are actually shorter than when the same object is observed to be at rest. So moving objects are going to contract in their direction of motion, right? So length contraction is only going to occur this way for the ruler. It's not going to like squish this way because these observers aren't moving, right? This, the ruler's not moving um, in this direction according to this observer. It's just moving towards them.